Hello, Jeffrey Hauser here, author of the Learn With series. Um, sometimes, at least in the US, it feels like I'm in the minority because I use Windows as my primary development machine instead of Mac OS or OS X or whatever they're calling it. But it's the devil that I know and it just works well for me and there's very little that I can't do within Windows that I can do on a Mac, at least for the context of um, single page application development with Angular or other tools. What I'm going to talk about today is the Windows Terminal app, which is, um, if you're used to Windows Terminal or familiar with it, you're probably used to using this, this command prompt, or possibly Windows PowerShell, which I use a lot less. Um, primarily, I use this. It's simple. It works, works for what I need, whether it's Docker images or node commands or jumping into WSL, which I don't have installed in this machine, but I do use sometimes at work. But often when I'm doing development, such as if I'm building a library or have multiple services, I have multiples of these tabs open, or not tabs, just multiple consoles open. And that's kind of a pain. And so what I'm gonna go is the Windows Terminal. And first, I've opened up the Windows Store here. I'm going to search for Windows Terminal and select the first thing and go ahead and get it. I use this all the time at work. The main benefit is it offers tabbed browsing, or rather tabbed terminals, so I can have one window and switch between different tabs very easily. And let's open it up. And boom, there it is installed. I'm going to use this video to go through various different things that you can do to set up and use the terminal. I'm going to start by drilling into settings. So you see up here, use the down arrow and settings. Startup, since I don't use PowerShell as my default, I'm going to switch that to command prompt. So when I open this, it immediately goes to the command prompt. I don't need to launch it on machine start. I'll go over not every setting in here, but some of them. When terminal starts, open a tab in the default profile. That's pretty much what I want. Don't want to keep the previous session open. Launch mode default. Actually, I'm going to switch to maximized because I like it maximized when I launch it on full screen. New instance behavior is definitely create a new window and new instance I believe is creating this plus sign to create a new tab. Launch size, um, I'll just use the default here. But so, save. Let's keep going through. Interaction, automatically copy selection to click, copy selection to clipboard off. Text format when copying. I'm actually going to switch this one to RTF. And this is primarily um, for my, my book writing. It might, I might be able to get another, some extra formatting if I copy and paste commands from this into my book, my, uh, which I write in Word. So I want to go on to say that when I originally set this up on my work machine many, many moons ago, most of it was all in a JSON file, which we'll look at later. So this whole um, setting screen is pretty new to me. It's pretty awesome, which means I haven't updated in a long time. Or if I have, I haven't tried to, to uh, fix the settings. Remove white spacing. No care about that. Word delimiters don't really care about changing that. Tab switcher interface style. Yeah, I'll keep that as the default. I don't, honestly not sure what that is entirely. But I do not want to focus the pane on hover. That would drive drive me nuts. I know some Linux machines I've worked with have have that sort of feature, but it's not something common in Windows. 
detect URLs and make them clickable? Absolutely. One when closing more than one tab. Let's keep that on. Let's go to the appearance. System default language is fine. The dark theme is fine. Position of newly created tabs after the last tab makes sense to me. It probably has after the current tab. Uh, after the last tab makes most sense to me. Hide title bar. I, I don't think I want to hide the title bar and I want to always show tabs. Um, I may I may regret that later because right now I don't think I have a title bar. But let's let's keep the title title bar there, and we're going to have to relaunch it when I'm done with all these settings. Curl up material and the tab row. I don't know what that means. Active terminal title as application title. That's fine. Always on top. No, that would drive me nuts if I'm trying to work in something else. Tap with mode. Uh, um, equal. Equal is the way to, I think to go here. But you know there are options: title length and compact. Pane animations. I don't care. But I'll leave it the default. Display icons in the notification area. Absolutely not. Hide terminal in the notification area when it's minimized. Um, no, actually, I, I like it down on the um, taskbar. Automatically hide window. If it loses focus, no, I do not want to do that. Um, color schemes, I'm not going to create one or change anything, so I'm going to stick with the default here. Rendering. Um, I'm going to stick with the default. It looks like I'm not going to deal with this new text rendering engine. I don't know what that is. And I don't want to deal with any performance issues for my, my sort of usage. Actions, I think we can edit these. These are just a lot of um, default key, key commands. Default key commands. Um, but let's go to profiles. And I'm going to start with the default profile. There's a few things I definitely want to change here. Um, so starting directory, I actually, yeah, I'm going to go to my projects um, LW directory. That stands for learn with my book series. Because um, most of the time when I open this up, I'm going there, either there or my blog directory, because I'm doing a sample for my blog. So let's just swap that. Um, to sort of my root project directory and I'll, a few fewer commands that I'll need. Don't care about the icon, tab title. Um, yeah, I don't need to replace the tab title. Run this profile as administrator. Um, I'm gonna, gonna keep this off. Sometimes I do like to run as an administrator, sometimes I need to, but I'm um, gonna keep that off. Let's go into appearance. Primarily, I want to keep things as is. I am going to bump up the font size. Um, primarily, it's not so bad at this setting, but when I'm, I decreased my monitor resolution in order to record this video. So at my normal resolution, this is going to be way too small. Font weight is normal is fine. Cursor shape, I didn't even know this was changeable, so that's super cool, but I'm gonna leave it as the default bar. Automatically adjust lightness of indistinguishable text. I'm gonna, gonna leave this to never. I think this might be useful in some situations. Like I've seen dark red, text if like it's an error in um, a test runner cause issues. I don't need to specify a background image, text form heading. I'll, I'll leave it with bright colors. Maybe something I'll experiment with later. Um, leave opacity same. Not going to play with this 
or padding or scroll bar visibility, save. And let's go back to default and look at advanced. So suppress title changes. This one I'm tempted to do, but I think I'm going to keep it off. Um, I know it's common when running scripts that I've noticed the um, the title of the tab would change, or at least in the default console, to like a directory or something, which sucks for doing screenshots. But it's something I'll watch. Um, doesn't matter for real development, at least in my world. This is it. I've never actually had a tab close automatically. I'm going to keep this to automatic. I may come back if I'm having issues with tabs just closing and I have no idea why. So, you know, I wasn't clicking start, but it looks like it was saving my changes as I went along, so that's good. I wasn't clicking save every time I switched. Yeah, and we have a bunch of profiles here. Um, one thing I noticed, super weird, these seem to be, oh, actually it's for 2017, for 2019. So these are the same. I don't actually use um, VS Code because I'm primarily an IntelliJ boy. So not going to delete those though. And and I don't know what legacy is or how this is different um, than just the default command prompt, which is primarily what I want to do. Uh, nevertheless, I think I've done everything I want to do. I'm going to save. I'm going to close. I'm going to open a new tab, which put me in the command prompt in the right location. You will notice um, I used this plus button to create the new command prompt. I think I showed that a bit earlier. And now I can do stuff like, ah, that is right. And I'm work working on a new, new book book or book chapters on, on um, creating NPM JavaScript libraries. So that, that's why I knew these directories off the top of my head. And then I can do NPM init to sort of create a new project. I'm actually going to cancel it, not do that. So exit automatically closes. Let it, there were a few things, and I don't know what they were, said they wouldn't take effect until I shut down. So do terminal back up. I'm going to right click and pin to taskbar because this is actually useful. So, so what we notice as I relaunched it, I'm in a command prompt instead of PowerShell. Previously, it defaulted to PowerShell. And I am here in that directory I specified. And we could, may not be completely obvious, but the text is a bit bigger, more easily readable. Well, I mentioned this earlier, and there's this open JSON file button at the bottom of the settings. And this is all the settings that set our defaults. Um, so I had to do a lot of manual tweaking to this when I originally started using um, this tabbed terminal. So that's pretty awesome that so much of it is now in a easy UI interface, so like copy formatting, RTF, we see some of these, default profile, like, let's see, does this refer to something else in this document? It does. It refers to the command prompt profile. Oops. Up. And yeah. That's the only two places. So, so technically, I could delete this or delete pieces out of here and remove some of the profiles. Or I can probably do that directly in the UI. But I'm not going to do that. 
um, with so much being editable through the user interface I don't want to don't want to mess it up by tweaking the JSON file on the fly unplanned especially not without a copy uh, one other thing I had the title up here and the tabs underneath it so that, that was something I changed with the settings so really from here things are super easy so um, before I went, went uh, was it lib and lib and if I create a new one let's close settings so now it's super easy for me to have two commands um, command prompts open one for sort of my cons consumer um, basically that would be an npm project for creating for consuming a lib for using a library and another for creating the actual library which is but it's often at work in my day job I'll have multiple tabs open each for different projects that I'm working on often projects that work together in some form of microservice set, set up so with that said there's actually once you get it once you have, understand the tabs which if you're looking at this as a developer you probably understand what tabs are and use them all the time in your browser um, I love I've really grown to love this as part of my tool set and I think you will too just a quick reminder like subscribe whatever you need to do go check out my books at learn with.com a lot of stuff on angular integrating with backends and more to come in the future thank you